Hi everyone, this is Mick Make Mail number 37 and one of these packages was actually hand delivered to me the other day. So let's get into it. Hi, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who make all my PCBs. If you're looking for some top quality PCBs with a fast turnaround time, then I'd consider checking them out. They offer one to six layer PCBs supporting BGAs, cutouts, fingers, uh, edge connectors and all sorts of other esoteric things. They're currently offering 10 PCBs for only two bucks US. And if you are a first time customer, then you can get $20 off shipping off your first order. So go and check them out. So I don't know which one to open first, but I might open this one. Hmm, interesting. So this board's pretty cool. It's a $17 SPC that you can pick up on Alibaba, I think. And it's based on a GX6605S uh, SOC, which is designed for TV boxes primarily. It has a 32-bit SOC running at 574 megahertz, uh, 64 megabyte DDR2 RAM inbuilt, and it boots off an SPI flash, a 4 meg SPI flash. Since it's a TV box, of course, it plays back uh, H.264 video at 1080p. It's got two uh, USB ports as well, a couple of buttons to mesh, and also a few extra GPIOs. Uh, so I think I need to fire this one up and see how it goes. This looks pretty cool. And I got two of them because, um, I don't know, I could use them somewhere. Oh, I just added to my ever-growing list of uh, projects that I have. So, let's fire it up. So let's uh, see first if they've bothered to burn a image into the SPI flash. They probably haven't, but uh, let's just try it anyway. Okay, so let's uh, power it up and see if we get any blinky lights. This might be interesting. Ooh, got a black screen. Ooh, blue screen, looking good. Ooh, pink screen. Oh, nice. Uh, so apparently I just need to insert a USB thumb drive. Uh, not sure what these buttons do. It's a little bit slow. Oh, hey Dad, what's hey. up? Nice. It just uh, plays videos without any issue. Uh, because it is a plain old set-top box. But the really nice thing is um, you've got a JTAG here so you can reflash uh, your own uh, Linux kernel. So I wonder if I can actually flash my own uh, Linux uh, kernel. Let's try it out. So that's a great little uh, SPC. Uh, you can boot up into Linux without any issue. Uh, they've got a little bootloader and SPI flash. I was going to do a mini review in this uh, mailbag, as I sometimes do with uh, SPCs, but I think this one deserves a full review. So I'm going to be doing that this weekend. So uh, stay tuned uh, for that review. Okay, on to the next thing now. This was actually given to me by Spencer Owen. For those people who don't recognize uh, that name, uh, it's the guy who's very much into the RC2014. So I actually went to a meetup uh, the other day and he handed this to me in person, which is nice. Uh, so I think he's given me everything uh, to build my own little RC2014, which is really cool. If you saw the uh, weekend video, uh, you would have seen uh, the meetup that I went to. Oh, great. Through hole components. Oh, this is so nice. This brings back so many memories. And you know what? Uh, he's actually 
uh, package this all up fairly professionally. I'm quite impressed with it. There's a fair amount of documentation, huge amount of documentation, and uh, there's uh, quite a, a crowd following behind uh, the RC2014. I'm going to build this up and have a lot of fun with it. So, should I read the manual? No. Actually, before I power it up, I probably should check the schematic uh, just to make sure I put everything in the right way. So I reckon uh, I've done everything right, hopefully, but uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, we've got a power light. That's always a good sign. And uh, let's fire up the console and see what's happening. So uh, there's something wrong with it. It's uh, not booting up, not printing anything out to the console. So I'm having to uh, pull out my Crow, sorry, my DSO, and uh, just probe around. Now I can see that um, on pin three, you can definitely see it trying to read from uh, ROM. So that's not a problem. The Z80 is actually booting up. It's not doing anything with it. So a um, bit more probing around, I think. I'm definitely getting uh, chip select on both the uh, ROM and the RAM, so let's just check uh, read and writes on the RAM. Okay, so I'm also definitely getting a clock. Of course, I'll be getting a clock from the crystal because uh, I'm getting definitely seeing ROM and RAM uh, read and writes. So what else could be wrong? Actually, what I might do is check something coming out the serial line because I may actually not pin four should be um, theoretically the TX on the serial port. Okay, so that's weird because I'm definitely getting some serial pulses out on the voltage divider that goes to the Raspberry Pi TX input. So something else is going on here. So I might get my logic analyzer out. So I'm actually getting data out um, I might just double check my Pi Zero W configuration again. And yes, that was it. Um, I had disabled the UART. I thought I had disabled the Bluetooth uh, module on the Pi Zero W. I had certainly done that, but I hadn't re-enabled the UART. So um, you re-enable it by uh, entering these two commands. Um, so I can actually see. Uh, let me just see if I can boot up again. All the magic happens. Um, memory top. Nice. Oh, this is so good. I love it. This is absolutely fantastic. So that's really cool. 
there's not a heck of a lot uh, you can really do on it at the moment. You can just run some uh, basic, basic code, um, uh, but the power comes in attaching this to a bus which uh, breaks out GPIOs and uh, displays and all sorts of other things. So I have a plan for this. Uh, I plan to get some of the GPIO expanders uh, and include this as the basis uh, for my Christmas tree game that I do every year. Um, it seems to get bigger and better, um, but this one will be quite good. Um, you'll be able to... actually no, I won't tell you. Uh, it'll be a secret. So stay tuned for the annual Christmas tree game uh, over the December holidays. Uh, anyway, um, while I was out I actually managed to pick up a few more things from my post box so I need to clear off all this and open those up. So there's a couple of things. Uh, I have no idea where they came from um, but let's crack them open. Oh yes! I know what these are. These are something I found on AliExpress or something. These are tiny little motorized, let me zoom in. These are tiny little motor um, actuators. So it's a, a plain DC motor um, and I think it has around about 20 turns to move a millimeter. They're designed to control the aerolons on a model RC plane. Um, and by the looks of it, it's got its own little control chip on there. I, I suspect that it's a pick but uh, I couldn't find any data sheets on them. Um, it would be just working off pulse with modulation, I'd say. Uh, plain servo um, that with a DC motor attached, but PIC provides the drive for the motor. So um, if they're nice little things. Um, maybe I should see if I can fire one up. Uh, so for this, I'm going to fire up a, an old Pi and see if I can uh, control these little actuators from uh, a Pi. So you can, uh, of course, move it one way or another way. They're quite nice, and they've got a fair amount of um, fair amount of torque to them too. So obviously the uh, uh, the little pick chip underneath is doing a fair bit of grunt work to to make sure that it it keeps the the air line in a certain position. So you can see how it's sort of fighting against uh, my movements. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with this, uh, but I thought they look really cool. It might be uh, part of my little Christmas tree game uh, this year, I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure I'll find a use for it. So let's open uh, this one up next. Excellent! Um, okay, so it's Karoli from Hungary. Uh, sent me this. Um, oh, yes, yes! So the UART uh, was a crowd supply campaign. Um, and uh, the intent with the UART is to provide um, ex essentially a TTL based UART uh, that has uh, a number of features that are over and above what you normally get from a, a uh, TTL UART. Uh, so it's got a, a standard USB port of course, galvanic isolation. It would have saved uh, my laptop from blowing up had I used this one. Uh, when I was testing out the uh, Cadis Edge. It goes up to 3 mega board rate, uh, which is huge, and also supports weird board rates too, so you can clock uh, the UART at weird sort of rates. So you've got some sort of dodgy PCB or something that doesn't have quite 9600 board, you can actually uh, clock it out at that. Full hardware handshaking, X on, X off, uh, software handshaking. It's got a whole lot of ESD protection, reverse polarity. There's a whole lot of protection on it that he's putting in. It's, it looks to be a pretty good little thing. What can I try it on? Um, so, I mean, this is pretty good. It's quite a nice uh, polished product. Uh, he managed to find uh, some injection molding. Actually just makes uh, the product look a whole lot more polished. But I know that injection molding is a bit of an art and it can be really expensive too. So it's a good job uh, that he did that. Uh, makes a big difference to, to what it looks like. Um, and there's other sort of little details, like he's actually labelled the, the cables, which is really nice. So it's having to figure out, you know, look up a data sheet and figure out exactly what is what. Uh, 
and just power it up and we should see something. If you're using one of the latest Linux kernels from 4.20 onwards, uh, you can make use of these GPIOs from a kernel driver um, or else download GPIOD. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is an absolutely great uh, tool. It'll save my bacon next time when I try and plug in uh, my laptop into a device under test. Uh, I won't fry it. Uh, anyway, thanks for sending that in, uh, Carolee. Sorry if I got your name wrong. So the next one, uh, well, it's got ESP RFID on it. So I guess it's an ESP RFID. So this is a, a product from a fellow called Vedran, and it's an ESP A266 based uh, door lock sensor that connects into some official door locks. This of course relies on door lock mechanisms and other things like that. I had actually ordered um, a couple of door locks, but they haven't arrived yet. So unfortunately I might be able to test this out. So this will have to wait for another mailbag, unfortunately, so I can't really go through it. So before we go, uh, if you ever live in Japan or China, uh, then you'd recognize these, this ball. So there's a lot of vending machines uh, in Japan and China, and they have these balls. More often than not, it contains not toys, uh, but uh, semiconductors. This one here is uh, one that contains a whole range of uh, semis, uh, and this one is the YM3438. So this is one audio chip that was used in the 80s, uh, in particular the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, so it's a quite a nice little chip, a very classic sort of 80s audio that comes out of it. Unfortunately, this is yet another project that I'll have on my list of projects, my ever extending list of projects. Uh, but now they've got the RC2014, uh, it's probably more appropriate to uh, have a, another project based on RetroKit. Uh, anyway, I think that about wraps it up for this uh, mailbag. Thanks for watching. See you next time.